Hello, welcome to Anders TV. My name is Jack Duxbury. Oz is behind the camera. And this is... Calc. My man, thank you for being here, mate. We've got the T05. Yeah. We made a video that came out when it was announced. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, in this video, just to warn you, we're going to go off into the weeds a bit. Uh, I think the plan is to start from an initial patch yeah. and then just give you an idea, hopefully, of the range of controls and what. Um, try and throw everything in there into That's the patch. That's it. Yeah. We'll just explore it, start from scratch. And now, just explore one it. thing I missed, and I, because I, I just missed it, I, uh, what does TO5 stand for? So, TO is the initials of Thomas Elroy Oberheim. Oh, right. He was blessed yeah. with a good middle name, wasn't he? <laughs> Indeed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's an Oberheim synth, and this is actually, you know, it's named after him, mm -hmm. of course. So, yeah. Let's go in yeah. it. Let's yeah, go in let's it, go patch it. it. Okay, so to in it, we're going to hold down octave minus two, and then the second octave button here, mm -hmm. and we're into... <laughs> Sawtooth! <laughs> yeah, so obviously, <laughs> starting off with a single oscillator, um, and this is our oscillator section here. And it's on a sawtooth there. We can bring in a square with pulse width. And we've got a triangle as well. Which is quite a chunky kind of oscillator sound to play with. A frequency control as well. To go all the way up and down and the frequency range. Yep. Um, what I tend to do quite a bit of the time is I'll just put it up an octave on the frequency here and then drop the keyboard down an octave. So we're still at the same pitch kind of level, but what that means is when I bring the second oscillator in, now we've got that kind of extra kind of low low end. There is a sub oscillator on there as well, which is an octave Whack it tracking in, let's an hear octave it. down. So actually, that's going to be the same. It's pretty tasty. Um, we've got an oscillator detune here as well. So let's just I tell you what. Let's go. Let's. Let's just fill it Yeah, up. we're trying to show you the range of the controls here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got both oscillators on all three waveforms now. And then you've got your detune as well. Have we got unison polymos? Yeah, uh, yes, actually. Yeah, that's a good one. So we're so just hearing it. We've got a unison here. So if I just switch that on... We've just got a single note playing, but we're actually only listening to one voice. So the trick here is press unison, and then you say one voice, two, three, four, oh, right. five. We're here, we'll go for five, so. And then if we bring the vintage knob up, more out of tune now. Purring. And it comes back in, you can hear it goes a little flatter there. So the vintage knob is actually, um, is basically just playing around with the tuning of the oscillators, the tuning of the filter as well, and actually we're not really using any envelopes at the minute, but it's also adjusting the shapes of the envelopes too. So you, you can get a lot of nice stuff there. But here's a nice little tip. So let's just hold down a chord. And if I press unison now, it loads in as a chord. So I've now got... Single finger stuff. Sneaky chord mode. So yeah, nice little sneaky single finger chord mode in Wicked. there as well. And I think that's a really neat trick. I mean, you know, it's it's not a dedicated chord mode as such, it's just in the unison you can set it so that all five voices are gonna just play you a chord. Wicked. And that's nice. Let's keep that. Mm. So we've got a super fat os all yep. the oscillators on, all the waves. Yeah. Let's get that. Can we, I want to hear that sweep of the filter yeah, and then that, yeah, fa yeah. that famous, as I've learned through um, being beasted by you guys on the internet, <laughs> Oberheim is sweeping resonance, right? That's exactly. what people want to hear. So, yeah, so a little bit of background about the filter, I guess. So this is the SEM filter, um, which was, uh, I think, was it 1970? Oh, I don't know my dates, to be honest, but uh, Tom Oberheim built his SEM module. Um, and this was the filter design that he sort of, put inside that and it's uh, basically it's kind of it's discrete components um, and it's got a particular kind of flavor it's a two pole um, non-resonant uh, uh, 12 db per octave filter um, and when in, in the uh, to5 we've it's a state variable which means we can move through the different uh, different types of filters so this is the low pass 
Okay, and you can just bring that down like that. Because it's 12 dB per octave, it's a little kind of softer. It's not quite as hard as a four pole, 24 dB per octave. But then you're right, the resonance is where it starts to really kind of come alive, I think, because um, firstly, it doesn't suck any bass out. It just adds that nice sort of top end in. So if we just back it off to about halfway, you can hear straight away you've got that nice kind of chewy sound. And if we crank the resonance there, we're just going to get it in, in droves. I mean, that's just beautiful. Yeah, so that's the filter, obviously. And of course, if we just go over to the envelopes here, we've got a dedicated filter envelope by default. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn an amount up, add quite a bit of attack and quite a bit of decay. So we'll get that rise and fall. So set the decay down a bit. Take my sustain down. Always forget to take my sustain down. <laughs> You can just hear that sweet breath that down. And that's, you know, that's just, just a really lovely, lovely kind of filter sound. We'll take the envelope off it now um, and just explore the rest of it. So that's the resonance there. So I've just brought that down. So that's the low pass filter. But this is actually a state variable filter, which means that we can access um, different types of filter um, in the same, well, using the same filter. Mm -hmm. So that was the low pass. If I switch up to the notch filter now. Yeah, that's got quite a different flavor. Mm. There's low pass. I love how it blends. It's, yeah, it's a lovely little kind of, uh, um, yeah, kind of interpolation into, into the notch. And again, if we just kind of bring up the resonance on the notch. Now that's a little bit more subtle, but you can still hear the resonance there. And again, if we just get the LFO, connect that to the cutoff, just put a little bit on there. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I don't know what speed it is, but. So it's quite subtle there on the, on the notch area, but it's there, it's, it's really lovely. Um, let's just take that down again. So we've not got LFO connected to the filter. Um, and then, yeah, we'll switch all the way up to the top here now, so we have a high pass. Now, from watching thousands of Nick Bat videos, <laughs> when, when you were around Who there- hasn't? Yeah, exactly. I freaking love you, Nick. Right, when it got around there, yeah. that's, ex that's what he always talks about, right? It's the high pass can give you almost more low end. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, what's going on there is, I mean, we've got the resonance up full, okay? Um, this isn't a self-oscillating filter. A lot of other analog filters out there will self-oscillate and will actually provide you with a sine wave. Um, it's just kind of, yeah, it's, it's self-oscillating. It produces a, a pure sine wave. This one won't do that. So, um, actually, that's, you know, that's just the nature of the SEM filter. Um, but what's happening here is, I press a note, obviously, we're getting the high, the high sounds are actually blocked out at the minute, but as we start to let the high sounds pass through, now, you can hear it tuned in there. And what's going on there is that the resonance, basically resonance in technical terms, is a little emphasis at the point of where the filter is being cut off. That's why we've got cut off and resonance. So the filter's cut off at a certain frequency point, but just at that frequency point, it is proper emphasized. So what we've done there is, even though it's not self-resonating, we're still emphasizing the frequency around that note. So you do get that, that kind of low end, because we're right kind of towards the bottom end of the filter there. So you can just hear that, that, that low end come in because we're emphasizing that frequency at the bottom there. So uh, yeah. it, it suits the a five voice, a poly synth as well, I think yeah. that. You can throw that in with a pad. I love that yeah, sound. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, that's kind of the three bits here, low pass, uh, notch, and high pass. But there is another filter style in here, and we've got to go to our menu for this one. Oh, 
And lo and behold, <laughs> oh, yes. I'm, I'm amazingly on that, that first page. We didn't, we didn't try for we that. Didn't we didn't plan for that once, yeah. <laughs> but there it is, filter band pass. And now when you switch on band pass, this little light comes on underneath. And now the notch area of the filter is actually a band pass filter. So that's ejecting the top and the bottom and letting a little bell shape in the middle, the band in the middle mm -hmm. to pass through. If I take that back to notch, quite a different personality. Put it back onto band pass. And that's not a digital filter. That just no, no. almost just changes that mode in the state yeah. variable. That's yeah. quite you. Yeah. And can we blend between the two using an LFO? Uh, not on this synth. Right, no. cool. So this is a switch. Um, Oddly enough, that is something that you can do. Oh, sorry, do. not between, um, just around this oh, control. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Can we yeah, do that? Absolutely, I'm sure, yeah. yeah. So, um, okay, well, let's do that. So, again, mono LFO, we'll set that to filter state, and we'll add an amount to it. So Big let's dollar. see what happens now. And, yeah, the cutoff isn't moving. The cutoff is static there. Yeah. But this is, yeah. We're changing the type. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, so that's the filter there. I missed that. I've got I've got spooky yeah. what's home, but it can't yeah. do that. And so <laughs> thanks for letting me it live out my synth dreams. The fact that's continuously variable, it just brings a lot of sculpting to I mean you can get subtle. Again, with the it, polys as yeah. well. Like the playing pads, I love that. Just subtle movement. Yeah, for sure. Nice. For sure. So we've got one LFO in the mix. Mm. We've gone around all of these. Yeah. What 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 will you do with a Poly LFO. Well, we could do a number of things, I guess. I mean, one thing that could be interesting is if we attach maybe the poly LFO to the pitch of the oscillators and we'll try and tune it in so we get an octave jump. So for this, I'm going to switch to a square wave mm -hmm. like that and I'm going to set destination to... Right, well, I can go for frequency two or frequency one or if I just use the little control here, I can actually go to all frequencies. So now that's going to hit... All of the uh, all of the oscillators, um, and we'll just bring up the let's see, bring up the amount. So we've got that kind of just running. It might be a touch. I see you nodding your head, but it might be a touch. There we go. It's a Friday morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in in nearly at weekend mode. So um. Yeah, so we've got that. Now, this is a poly LFO. This is mono. This is just basically like one hand doing that with the cutoff pot. The poly LFO is basically every voice has its own individual LFO and is triggered by each of those voices. So... So you can hear they're kind of working individually now. Mm. I love that they're asynchronous. Mm. Mm. That's it, yeah. And so that, that's really nice. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you can go into your program menu and you can go and find the LFO controls and we can set it to LFO note reset. Well, actually, that was on note reset. We'll take that off. You've got a little bit more control over the LFO stuff. For example, SLU as well. What does that do? So SLU is quite a clever little system. Um, it basically rounds off the edges of the shape you're using for the LFO. So we've got, um, we've got a square wave running. And if I just open that up again. Now, if we add SLU, what hopefully we'll see is as we add the slew, it'll kind of round off the edges of the square and it'll probably get somewhere close to a sine wave. And so you get to the point where it's, it can't reach the full amount because of the, the speed. And of course you can apply that to any of the shapes. I mean, if we go to sample and hold, for example, so this is now random. This is obviously, to be a bit of fun, this will be random pitch generating now. But again, we can use slew there to just round off like a bit of glide to the mm -hmm. notes, I guess. 
<laughs> As I said, it's Friday. And on the and field, <laughs> I love that because I've been, uh, a few since I've demoed have a, instead of sample and hold, they have a smooth yeah. random. Yeah, okay. and, I, and on filters, I yeah. love that. So I love yeah. that you've got that in there. It's just yeah. another way to, there's a, some really interesting depth to this synth. yeah for sure yeah it's just you know this it's pretty much it's a it's a super powerful synth you know there's, there's there's on the top panel you've got access to all the things you want your envelopes your filter your oscillators mm -hmm. your lfos but if you just want to go a little bit deeper in there you know it's very quick and easy to get to kind of some pretty intricate stuff uh, one thing i mean we mentioned this in the previous video but one thing that i really love about this is the way that um the the configuration of of the modulation matrix is just made super easy. So for example, if I want to, I don't know, get the amp envelope, I just press mod source, grab the amp envelope, and you see in the menu, it's applied that to the source point of the, of the, of the mod matrix. Then I grab destination, and I say, I don't know, let's put that onto pre-delay on the reverb, and then we just turn up an amount, and we'll put the reverb on, but now. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got this envelope now basically changing the pre delay. In fact, let's go negative because that might just have a bit more of a. You know, and that's actually. And being able to modulate the effects yeah. is heavy. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a nice thing. Um, there's some interesting kind of behavior. I think, I, I mean, this is super deep dive stuff let's now, do it. but let's, uh, yeah. So if you look at the mod matrix on the screen, you'll see envelope two is polyphonic. It's got a little P in a box next to it. The reverb is, a, is an effect at the end of everything. So it's, mono, it's a monophonic control, if you like. It's a stereo reverb, but the fact it's only got one control for mm -hmm. size. We don't have five one per voice reverbs. So you'll see there's a little P there and there's a little M there. So what that means is that the, the first note held will set off that modulation effect. So now if I add other notes, we're not getting that same trigger of the effect. And that's just the way that it's set. So it's all tied to the first note held. So I press that down, we get that envelope connected to the pre-delay and then the subsequent notes as you play on top won't have an effect it's just the nature of the fact that you know there's one reverb there's not five reverbs yeah. one per voice sort of thing so yeah so that's an interesting thing and of course that means that we but we can do really crazy stuff like for example let's go on here we'll go to source and this time i'll, I'll change it to oscillator 2. now oscillator 2 is a normal oscillator for generating sounds, but it's also available in the mod matrix to modulate stuff. So we've got pure audio rate FM, frequency modulation, that we can assign to places. To anything? To anything. Wild. So uh, what could we assign it to? I mean, we could maybe, uh, what could we put it on? I know what we could do. <laughs> we'll give it a go. I don't know if this will work. I'm going to go to time for the effect, and I'm going to dial in the delay, turn it on. I'll take off the reverb for now. Now, if I increase this, now this could, could go horribly wrong, but let's find out. <laughs> I'm just going to turn up the amount. So we've got, I'm going to go full for this. And we're going to use these three oscillator shapes at the audio rate, playing a note, to basically waggle that pot for me. But... So as you, start, as you start to play around with the time now, you'll see this got quite a different effect than... Now let's take all that off, and we should have a much cleaner delay now. So, you know, just things like being able to take oscillators and patch it into effects. I mean, that's pretty, pretty yeah, unusual. deep sound design. It, it really is. It yeah. really is. Now, so that's the oscillator. I mean, again, we're, we're, on, we're on this deep modulation tip. So we've got the oscillator up there. 
Now, of course, you know, we've got these mod destination buttons that make it super quick to get the top panel stuff in there, but as well, we've got different sources in here. So if I switch all the way over to over here, we can take the audio out. So what's coming out of here oh. as a modulation source, which again is pretty kind of unusual. I don't think I've kind of come across many synths that can do that. So it's almost like you can kind of use it as a feedback yeah. kind of control, but in modulation terms. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. If we go to the destination. The whole patch yeah. and the noise kicking out yeah. can turn a knob yeah. on it. Kind, yeah, that's kind of basically <laughs> what's happening. Now, I've stuck the audio out to go to the cutoff, and this is going to get pretty hairy, I think. But let's give it a go. So we've got resonance up, but... Let's take the, uh, take the delay off so we can kind of hear mm -hmm. it a little bit more. So we can, yeah, we That's can... That's where the subtlety of that filter mm. on the poly makes all... Because it wasn't as mental. Sometimes, I think, when I do mono synth demos, it yeah. gets crazy with yeah. the um, four-pole filters. Sometimes yeah. it just runs away with me. Yeah, I, I think was... um, I think a two-pole on a poly is, is is about right a lot of the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. Um, uh, yeah, everyone, come at us everyone, in the comments, yeah. <laughs> everyone loves a four-pole. Um, who doesn't? But, uh... <laughs> there's, there's been some amazing innuendo as well in this bit, with mentions of notches and poles. Yeah, yeah. And mate, well, I've got to say it. I've got, got to it, say yeah, it. That's it. But, but the thing is, though, you're quite right, Jack. I mean, on a poly synth, Often, just a bit more subtlety to the filter is just going to let it. Mm. It's just going to let it sing out more. And I've kind of found this with the reverb on here as well. Now, the effects in here are—they're really lovely effects. But the reverb, for some reason, has—I don't know—it's got a little bit of magic to it. Uh, and I was chatting to Carson, one of the kind of the lead product designers, um, on uh, they've been working on this, and we were discussing this last night and. And I think because it's um, because it's a two pole filter, the way it's kind of going into the reverb is just making it sound a little sweeter. Whereas if it's a four pole, it's just going to be sort of there's going to be a bit more kind of mm. uh, reverbness there. Whereas with the two pole, because it's a little less extreme of a filter cutoff, there's a bit more synth in well, the let's reverb. Let's have a right? listen. And I've just spotted yeah. we've got. Uh, uh, high pass, low yeah. pass on the reverb. Yeah, so we, yeah, tone control. See that yeah, that's yeah. right. So let's maybe back off the uh, the crazy um, the crazy yeah, feedback, feedback stuff. Yeah, it into itself. We've got the reverb on there. Might be a bit easier, perhaps, if we just add a bit of LFO to the uh, to the to the cutoff. So we're going into the low pass mode now with it. Get that nice dark kind mm -hmm. of reverb sound. There. It's almost shimmer. I mean, it's not shimmer, but it, you know, it's got that kind of Being able, I mean, you, you could hear instantly how powerful that, uh, to clean that up with mm. the, uh, without EQ, and so that's yeah. a wicked control. It that. is, and it's very just, performative. Yeah, it is, you're right. And it's, and, you know, uh, modulatable? Uh, oh, but of course. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, reverb tone is now on the poly Come off there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely. getting, I'm getting this synth thing. <laughs> I've been hanging out with signal sounds and elevator sounds recently. Yeah, there yes. you go. 
that's it. So yeah, I mean, you're right. That's it's a really lovely reverb on this, and it, it particularly sings lovely, uh, sings really nicely in the TO, I think. And I've got to talk about this this cross mod uh, control again. So cross mod is basically FM. This is taking the second oscillator. As we saw, we can you can we can choose that second oscillator in the modulation matrix. Mm -hmm. But this is like a hardwired version of it, and this is basically taking oscillator two and frequency modulating oscillator one. So it's FM. But the difference with this and the other Oberheim synths out there is that cross mod has traditionally been an exponential form of FM. And exponential is basically just note going to note kind of thing. And, and to be perfectly honest, it can get a little bit, a little bit clangorous and a bit kind of dissonant very quickly. But with this, it's a, a linear through zero uh, cross mod, which means it's a little bit more aligned with kind of what you would expect traditional digital FM to kind of do. Right. Obviously, it's not digital. These are all analog. They're VCOs in here. It's important to say that these are voltage-controlled oscillators. But having through zero on it is quite interesting. So, yeah, I'll just take the mix down a little bit on that. And then... In fact, maybe it'd be better if I just started with a new sound. Um, and yeah, so here we go. And just before we jump into it, like you said, because I can't get my head around mm. that mathematically in my head. What, what are we going to listen yeah. for? It, but okay. How does it manifest itself? Well, so more subtle? No, it'll stay in tune. That's the, right. <laughs> yes! that's, the, yeah, that's the thing. So it'll stay in tune. Um, I mean, it's, it is going to be quite subtle on it, but I've just put it down to triangle waves here. The reason for that is obviously, FM is traditionally sine waves with each other. Triangle waves are the closest to that. But here is just two sine waves. I mean, we're not even listening to oscillator two. I'm just playing two notes. Very subtle at this point. If I start to play around with the tuning. So you can kind of tune that in. If you go to like a fifth. Now, traditional exponential cross mod won't keep that sort of tuning stuff, you right. see. Across the range of the keys. Get it. Whereas if you can dial it in nicely with exponential for one note, but then you play another note and all of a sudden it's kind of, it's all over the place. But here with the cross mod, we'll get that in. But the thing is, it's been tuned, this part has been tuned so that when you uh, crank it, you get still get to crazy spots. Okay, cool. still hold and once again you know we could say okay well let's get uh, the filter envelope and let's apply that to oh, to that well actually now i'm going to apply it to the pitch of oscillator 2 right. <laughs> and what that'll do is that'll basically just make that that pitch control move and that, that'll affect the fm <laughs> Now we can't hear oscillator two here, we're just hearing that pitch sweep mm -hmm. thing because that's coming from the cross mod. Very FM. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. But that that's the first time on an on an analogue synth that I can remember actually that we've had kind of through zero. Um and yeah, it's a really nice thing. Um yeah. It really sets it apart. Mm. It's important to say, you know, these are voltage controlled oscillators. So they're not digital oscillators. They're not just going to stay in tune. They're just, you know, they're not just code re being regurgitated. This is electricity moving through parts. So mm. there will be tuning discrepancies between the oscillators, which can have an effect on that. I mean, a th true through linear is only going to stay true in terms of tuning if everything is always yeah. perfectly in tune. And sometimes those little kind of VCO based tuning discrepancies that we all know and love have an effect on the cross mod as well. And actually that's, you know, that's kind of another that's what part of charm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, they're right. Well, let's, yeah. let's um, cook something up. We'll yep. play you out. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for filming us as well. And uh, yeah, click, 
down below uh, for more information on this. Maybe this is coming out about a time where it might be in the store to even try out. So yeah. Anderson's is unique in the fact it's about half an hour outside of London and we've got a big showroom where you can try these things out and turn the knobs for yourself. And uh, maybe even uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Anyway, let's play them out and we'll see you soon. Right. Bye. Nice one.